Ever wondered what makes a Texan accent so captivating? Howdy, my name's Sarah Jordan, I'm going to take in. Love it or hate it, the Lone Star accent is absolutely iconic. But I have news for you, Texas has more accents than the color of her horses. So if you think you know your twangs from your drools, well, I'm about to test you. Hey, they had told me that she was pure Oriental. And when I talked to him on the phone, he didn't sound like it. The first time he was on a horse, the next day, he couldn't move a single muscle in his body. He was sore. He was so sore, he got scared that he thought he needed to go to the doctor. If you wanted to hide from the law in the 1800s, this was probably the place to run to. Probably hide as the, as the cottontail rabbits if you wanted. And one of those bunnies got his favorite saying from here. <laughs> Watch up, Doc. It's a true story, but how about the accent? You know, the, the people accent. Walk, walked up to this fine lady, she was in her mid-60s. I said, hey, ma'am, you got any oil? She said, oh. I said, oh. She said, I don't know what oh is. One, I've never stole anything in my life. Two, if a dang sure wouldn't be for my daggum workplace. For three, I just ain't no daggum thief. So I don't know why y'all keep freaking asking me. Yep, I think we got a good one, but don't go telling old ladies how to talk. They're doing just fine, thank you kindly. Usually, when my accent gets real heavy, like it is right now, it, that's that's sort of the natural, um, unguarded way of talking. And you know what? I like my accent. So this would be considered a rural Texan accent. It's not quite as twangy if you're from the major cities, but if you're in the countryside long enough, chances are you'll slip right back into that classic sound. I don't know what to say about, you know, I say fire and weird and hands and... People say I have a real strong Texas accent. In this part of the Lone Star State, a lot of the rivers were named by the Caddo tribe. Like this river, which means floating water. Even the word Texas started with a Caddo Indian word. Check it out. Story goes they gave this name to the first Spanish explorers in the 1500s, but don't take my word for it. This is not just land. It's our family's legacy. It's a passion. It's a love. And now with my kids, we're in six generations deep. It's the way we feed our family and the way we try to help feed other Texans. No, your ears are not lying. There's definitely some Southern charm going on here. I wonder why. Now, it's true that in the big cities, people of Texas are losing their old timey accents and expressions like these are disappearing. But venture into a honky tonk Texas town and you're likely to bump into more slow talking cowpokes than you can shake a stick at. But I'm wrong, the Lord knows the reason. I'm just a cowboy. As for those who claim that nobody really says y'all anymore, well, y'all, doesn't it sound wonderful in a British accent? Y'all, it's universal here, so you're not gonna get away from it. Apparently, the best accents come out when something triggers their Texan pride. Is it true, Texans? Syrup, pajamas, cot, naturally, aluminum, and envelope. And I'm gonna throw in an extra one because my husband and I know other people make fun of me for saying it like this, but I'm gonna throw in the word friends. France. I don't feel like I'm saying in any kind of weird way. Don't make fun of anyone, guys. You have a weird accent too, to someone. I certainly do. Well, it's pretty clear that we have a whole lot of deep south here. It's the classic sound from around the piney woods, and we are in East Texas. That's right, right across from Louisiana. If you think we're off to a good start here, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more awesome accents around the world. And when I hit you with that smart mouth that nobody can agree on. What's your name? Fire. Hey, Texan, this is Jibbery. Please, no gunfights. Okay, okay, not fair, Ollie. What? What is this? A book auction? Let's try again. There was a sign up that said uh, for sale, fifteen acres. So uh, I told my wife. Uh, I'm gonna come down here tomorrow and buy that. And she just laughed at me. She said, what are you gonna, what would you do with it if you had it? And I said, I'd grow peaches. And she just laughed. <laughs> she thought I was crazy. Well, uh, that was on a Sunday. Well, uh, I think it was Tuesday when I come down here and bought it. Hear that Sunday, Tuesday thing? Well, you're gonna hear plenty of strange things out here. And it's definitely not all peach farming. Good evening, sir. He's never left this house. It's my home. It's what I am. I'm a Texan. It's like a whole other country. Yeah, I'd like to say, yeah, it is its own country. <laughs> Keep on going with this. Cowboys and ranchers have been roaming these parts for eons, so if the strong drool reminds you of old cowboy movies, you might know where we are. Did you watch No Country for Old Men? Well, it was filmed right here. Cowboy's man is willing to jump up and do his job no matter what. 
You ask them to do something, they get up and do it. They don't question you. They don't ask you why. They don't argue with you. They go and do what you ask them to because they figure if you didn't ask them to do it, it didn't need to be done. I mean, we don't make a lot of money. I mean, there's a lot of other things we could do. And it's, a lot of it's dangerous, you know. I wish I knew. I mean, ever since I was a little kid, that's just all what I've always wanted to do. Fun fact, in this part of Texas, the Apache were one of the first Native American tribes to learn to ride horses, which they got from the Spanish. If there's any place you could still hear the whispers of Apaches, Comanches, and pioneers, well, it's out here. In January 2017, I became the sheriff. I've been a cop for almost 25 years. A long time ago, when I first came to work here in 2001, Probably my second year, I knew that this is where I was gonna retire. That's the only thing that's a constant that never changes, that people are still nice here. Ah, just when you thought you had it. We are actually on the very far end now. Couldn't sidle any closer to the border. Which border, you ask? Dude, he doesn't stop texting my phone. He's acting crazy, right? Who's with you? Well, who's all there? I'm just joking. I, I do, chill, I'm just kidding. Hey dude, tomorrow dude, I'm gonna go buy like a badass car, bro. It's gonna be fast, bro. It's gonna go super fast. They share a lot of culture with Mexico and New Mexico, so it can only be West Texas. Before the next accent, here's a little test for you. Boy, I cannot wait till the green lights go out. Yeah, the race place is gonna be, I think, definitely a tie for a battle. But uh, hell, we got, I mean, my sides are set on the podium. Now, if you know where this guy's from, you've been watching my earlier videos. And if you don't know, well, I'm sorry, I will clear up the mystery later. I have to say, I love accents, whether it's English accents or accents of other languages. And this is a channel all about languages after all. Now, when I learn a new language, I've learned eight languages myself. I like to dive right in and get as much immersion as I possibly can. And one trick that I always use when I start a new language is to have a no TV in English rule. I can't watch TV in English. Instead, I only watch shows in the language that I'm learning. And it's a super easy way to get better at listening really quickly. But the catch is when you try to watch TV from another country like Colombia or Japan, sometimes you can't because of the location that you are in. You'll find that TV is blocked from that country if you try to access it from outside, right? That's where a little something called a VPN comes in handy. And the one I use is called NordVPN, who are nice enough to sponsor this video. Thanks, guys. Basically, a VPN <clears throat> is like a secret tunnel for your internet. It's a nifty piece of software that lets your computer pretend you are in any country you want. So if you pick Italy, you can watch Italian TV shows, movies, news, all that stuff, just like you were there in Italy. It's a great way to binge watch and learn a ton at the same time. Now, NordVPN gives you access to 60 countries, 6-0, and gets you the fastest speeds of all VPNs on major platforms. This means your internet connection stays lightning fast even when you are streaming. Plus, it is super affordable. Right now, you can snag a two-year plan with four extra, four extra months, did you hear that? Here's the link, so head over there if you'd like to sign up and give the No English Rule a run for its money. Link in the description below as well. It's an absolute no-brainer if you are learning another language, partly for the immersion that you get, but also keeps you motivated. For example, every Sunday morning, I connect to Japan and I watch a couple of hours of NHK live. <clears throat> it feels like I'm right there in Japan and I absolutely love it. So head over to nordvpn.com forward slash Ollie Richards to sign up. Imagine being able to stream TV anytime you want from the country where you're learning the language. As a learning tool, this is worth a lot. So just sign up and with one click, you will be in France, Sweden, South Korea. Take your pick. It's a language known as Dream. So head over to nordvpn.com forward slash Ollie Richards, link in the description too, and grab this amazing offer. Right guys, got your water canteens filled? always had an accent. I don't know why. But even when I was a teenager and I worked for the telephone company, you talked to your customers then, you know, and I got lots of comments about my southern draw. When you think of Texas, you might not immediately think of this lonely corner at all, but as you just heard, it definitely has its own accent going on. They say it's a higher pitched nasal Texas twang, as big as the sky. But I guess it depends on who's doing the talking. It is 1013 in Happy, Texas, and my thermometer says 55 degrees outside, and the wind's blowing. It's supposed to get up to about 30, 45 miles an hour, so it's going to be dusty. The high today is like 75, so... That'll be nice. The weather reporter who is not scared of insane dust storms. That's pretty impressive. No wonder they have sayings like this. 
Actually, this region is pretty famous for its wild and woolly history. Cattle drives, oil booms, wildfires, they've seen it all. Why does everyone look so chilled out? Uh, my whole family lives here and born and raised, and so I thought it'd be fun because um, people usually can tell when I go out of state or out of the country where I'm from. I don't know. I don't see it, but other people do. So what is your best guess? Well, I will tell you. It is the accent of the Texas Panhandle. You see this big block right here? You knew that was a thing, didn't you? Hold on to your hats. The next one is quite tricky. There was once a rental steer in the Pease River Breaks that had been missed on many a roundup. He had been pursued by some of the best, but his number had never come up. And uh, as I got up in high school, I got to thinking, well, so many days these fellas are all gonna be gone. Them old stories be gone with them, you know. So I, I just, I enjoyed them. I thought I'd write them down. Somebody else might enjoy them someday. I grew up, I started in the first cold when I was 11 years old. And it, it was kind of a rough and tumble affair. We, didn't know much about getting the horse ready to do anything, so I learned how to tie one foot up. What we staked him to start with. Here, accents are as rugged as the terrain, with people talking like they've got a mouthful of dust and a boot full of rattlesnakes. Speaking of scaly creatures, know what they found in the desert? This guy. Don't know where his people went, but he was 100 feet long and probably weighed over 50 tons. It's not far from the prairies and the lakes region, and here you'll find the most horse farms in all of Texas. Part of them just stood right there in them tracks. I couldn't believe it. Yep, T's here are dropped quicker than a desert sunset. Well, you see, this morning I had a little issue. I blew out a tire on my trailer, but uh, got the old Pony Express. Pretty good way to get into work. I absolutely love this, don't you? Everything is bigger in Texas, but if you ask me, they all sound like they're chewing tobacco. It reminds me of someone, actually. What's your name? Taylor. What's that? Taylor. You she said Peter. So, where are we? Well, we are way up in northwest Texas, but if you yelled out Paducah or Bowie, well, your skills are pretty good. When they first told us that we were nominated, we all freaked out. Um, we couldn't believe it. And the first thing I promise, the first thing that came to mind was like, I have to take a camera so I can take a picture with all these stars. Right, yeah. And it, it didn't hit me later until yeah. like, oh my God, you know, what if we win or, you know? Yeah. And we went out there and they didn't let me take my camera in. Pour yourself a margarita for this one. Go on, I'm gonna give you some very different accents, all from one end of the state. There's a bit of the Old West and the Deep South and Latin America all rolled into one. And one thing's for sure, life here is all about blending the best of both worlds, English and Spanish. Howdy, hobby, how about some girl before we turn on the NASCAR? Ain't this what you want, the perfect American wife to make your life more convenient? Do you think that's an American accent? from Texas. Hold on, hold on. Not like that. Who put Gloria in my video? Five hours? You all are crazy. You all? You mean y'all? You all? No, y'all. You all. No, you smoosh them together. Y'all. Escúchame. Y'all. Y'all. Here, take a drink. That'll loosen the lips. We'll get it. Did you know that a third of Texans speak Spanish at home? That's right, pretty cool. There was once an era called Mexican Texas. It was the time when Texas was part of Mexico. You can tell by all these Spanish words the cowboys use. Then in the mid 1800s, a ton of people walked in from the Ozarks and the Appalachian Mountains. It's a small wonder the dialect is a bit different. Boy lost any sense of fear and danger. He just wanted a closer look at that stranger. He said, mister, why are you dressed that way? And the man said, I wear these clothes every day. They're not just a costume, they're a part of me. I'm what folks call a cowboy, you see? I mean, almost everyone looks like a cowboy. Is this normal? Being one with a horse, it's legit. I love it. We were country before country was cool. Bottom line, there's a lot of history here. Spanish, Jewish, Mexican indigenous, Texan indigenous, Creole, Mestizo. The Spanish influenced dialect is called Tejano English and it's pretty clear we can only be in one place, Southern Texas. Now, which way should we go next? This state is huge after all. Let's give you a quick sample. All your windows and doors and everything else you need and such. Once upon a time, the Comanche were a powerful Plains Indian tribe in this part of Texas. But now you have big cities and fancy accents like this. We're definitely close and, you know, both my brothers were always, their friends were my friends and, you know, always 
was allowed to go along with those guys and you know in the summer when we'd just be outside all day you know those guys always kind of let me tag along and we never fought that much. It's gonna be more and more rare to hear a real Texas drawl here. It's a cosmopolitan city, so you know, what are you gonna do? But there are still plenty of strong accents around. Water, water burger, Maine, woman, fur, child, Kummer. T. Jones, T. Jones just mean mama. I'm finna go to my T. Jones house. You know what I'm saying? Now, I bet you know where we are here, so write it down quick before I tell you. Here it comes. They are all from a city you've definitely heard of, Dallas. Time to swap that water for something a little more Texan. He said, I don't care what you smoke, what you take, <laughs> women, uh, he, you get shaken so bad. Uh, like he said, there's no high. Uh, and I used to get a high unbelievable yeah, high yeah. when, when I was younger. Oh, I don't, of course. I don't get that high much anymore. Here, the accents are smoother than a fine bourbon, I think, or maybe it's a fine moonshine. Well, it's the land of springs, stony hills, and steep canyons where the Tonkawa people once lived, and two creatures not found anywhere else on Earth. This fish and this very cute turtle. Must be a lot of water around, right? I don't know if I've ever eaten on a saddle. You never eaten on a horse then, have you? Yeah, no, I haven't. Well, well you need <laughs> to come out to my place. I got a donkey you can eat off of, a horse you can eat off of. This town is the cowboy capital of the world. Name it for an extra point, comments below. The county is a place of legends and howling coyotes, a world-class view of stars, planets, and meteorites, a haunted road, and an enchanted rock that groans and creaks. About 1.2 billion years ago, this entire area was made up of rocks that had been cooled and then reformed into metamorphic rocks. And then a big bubble of light granite magma floated up to the top and intruded its way into this pack saddle schist. That was called the Town Mountain Granite. Wow. Well, the military guys and vets like it. They buy land out here for hunting, fishing, and camping. What was your guess for the cowboy capital of the world then? Last clue. Here we are at the 11th Street Cowboy Bar, where horses and motorcycles are both welcome. I wasn't born here, but I got here as fast as I could because I love Texas. If you said Bandera, well, you are spot on, and the charming accent is straight out of the hill country. But sounds a bit like where I live on the other side of the ocean. Whatever. There's someone annoying nearby, though, deep in the heart of Texas. The stars at night are big and bright, deep in the heart of Texas. I tell you what, you see that part where that old George come in there talking about tasting his own bourbon, Kramer comes sliding in, just like you know, we do. I tell you what, man, them dang old New York boys. <laughs> what? I have no idea what he just said. All I know is that he's supposed to have a Texas Ranger accent. Well, I'd have to first off say that he's all hat and no cap. You probably know this minor celebrity. Though. I like how 60 minutes feels like an hour. We're in a rush for the right reasons. We got a pretty good threshold for, for not being in a rush for the wrong reasons. All right, okay, not fair really. McConaughey comes from around here, but his accent is a bit confusing because he moved around a lot as a kid. I think the best place to find out how real locals speak is to hit the old honky-tonk dial. You, you know Dorian Gray, you're not at Carnegie Hall. You know you're in a real honky-tonk. <laughs> Always want to remember and be in the moment of yesterday. And that's what the spoke is, it represents that. Because you walk in, there's nothing changed since 1964 when he opened. And if you really want to fit in, you should know how to talk right. For example, I'm competing in a fishing tournament this weekend. Yonder. There's no definitive length as to how long a yonder is. Proper usage would be Enchanted Rock is just over yonder. I have to be honest though, the younger generation do not sound very much like cowboys. Because of how I've grown to love this city, I got involved with Texas Wranglers, a campus organization that's given me the opportunity to give back to the city I've gained so much from. Through my work, I've gotten to meet inspiring people who have overcome extreme hardship. Looking for something a little faster pace? Circuit of the Americas is the only Formula One track in the United States. And this F1 racetrack is the city of, well, of course, it's Austin in central Texas. That's my cue to solve the mystery of this Texan's accent. He's not Texan at all. Come on, people, he's not even American. He's an Aussie, very funny guy. You need to watch this video later. We need to protect that water source that, that, uh, that gives us all life. And that water source also has a domino effect on uh, wildlife, like these birds, uh, cormorants, and all the, the, the game and fish that live in the water, or 
by the water. Well, there is definitely water involved in this area. And if you're scratching your head, wondering which part of Texas we haven't covered yet, well, better listen closely. There are lots of different accents here. We country, you know what I mean? We from the South, a lot of our music, a lot of Southern influence come from other Southern influence. In my neighborhood, the lingo that we use, the way that we talk, I guess maybe it's a little slower. We slur stuff a little bit. This ain't my first rodeo. Been there, done that. If you know your Texan cities, this one should be a slam dunk. Lots of French speaking Creoles played their part here, by the way. Now, how about this small town accent? They were all freaking out, asking why we were riding a cow and a horse to school. And I was like, well, I'm not wasting any gas. They didn't realize that you could ride a cow with the saddle on. And then like the little kids are like, mommy, look, there's a cow. You're never too young or too old to try something new. You're certainly not too old or too young. And that's why you should be learning a language or two. Final clue incoming, come on. Cowboys and gals, you need to get this one. A long time ago, three Spanish guys and an Arabic speaking African survived a shipwreck here, came ashore and then took an epic walk inland for 2000 kilometers. Their goal was to get to Mexico, long way from here on a raft. So they literally wash up here on this beach in November naked. They were the first African and Europeans to enter the American West. Pretty wild. Do you even know that Texas has islands? I didn't, but then what do I know? We are on the gorgeous Gulf Coast. First home to a cool coastal tribe. Right, it is confession time. How many of these accents did you get? How many did you miss? Let me know in the comments. Also, if you think I've got something completely wrong, please do let me have it in the comments to correct the record. Now, we are not done with accents. Let's see if you can figure out these accents from that sketchy place outside Texas.